meeting between the top two seeds in the district semifinal goes down tonight in Norwalk, where conference champions Margareta and Crestview, led by all District 6 performers Julian Washington and Justice Thompson, meet for a spot in Saturday's championship. And you can watch all the action live and free anywhere the internet can be found, and it's all coming up next. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Welcome to Norwalk for the Kissel's Lawn Care Spraying and Painting pre-game show. And make sure you call Dave for their services at the number on the logo. I'm Brian Skrowski. Joe Baylog is joining me here tonight. And speaking of numbers, how about the number one seed and the number two seed meeting for a trip here to go to the district championship? This should be a great game, Joe. Two teams that are having phenomenal seasons. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is... This is always the exciting part. This is one of the most exciting weeks of the basketball season is district tournament play. Because you get outstanding teams that are that are right in the area. 
Uh, although these two teams have not played each other, I'm sure they've scouted each other probably a lot since about the middle of January. So they're both going to know each other very, very well. Um, and it's going to be a great atmosphere here at Norwalk High School. Margareta, the number two seed, shared the SBC Bay Division crown with Willard this season. They had win streaks of 12 games and now five games straight after that loss to Willard. Collected a lot of quality wins, Joe. I mean, they, they played a very tough schedule, beat the Flashes, Seneca East, Calvert, Old Fort. There's a lot to like about this team and the schedule that they played. Yes, I mean, uh, you know, they, uh, you mentioned two games to Willard. They beat Willard at Willard, and then uh, I think Willard probably played their best game of the year when they went to Margareta and, and kind of handed it back to them. Uh, but Coach Keller's squad has had an outstanding season. Um, and this is the next step. You, you tied for a league title, both teams have. Uh, Crestview won theirs, uh, Margareta tied with Willard. Uh, they've won sectional titles. Now the next step is to kind of, you know, put another stamp on your season is to uh, win a district title. And uh, this is the first step in the district semifinal. Taking care of business so far in the tournament, knocked off Lakota and then Cardinal Stritch. And great shooting team when they get inside of the painted area. But they've really got a solid player in their stud sophomore, Julian Washington. Love watching this kid play. He's got springs in his legs, Joe. He's got nice soft hands, catches in traffic. I mean, this, this dude, he, he's he's probably the best overall athlete that we're going to have in the gym tonight. Well, averaging 20 points a game, averaging almost uh, seven rebounds a game. And then the one really impressive stat, shooting 83% from the free, free throw line, sure. which is an area that Margareta as a team excels in as they shoot 72% from the free throw line. The Sandusky Bay Conference, really good again this year, as I mentioned, and tied to get a share of the league this year. We'll show you that after we honor America, the playing of our national anthem. So the table is set for a big night of district semifinal basketball in the Division III level here at Norwalk. You heard about the number two seed. Now let's introduce you to the top dogs, the Crestview Cougars. Another record setting season for them. Joe Fireland's conference champs for the second straight year and broke the program record for regular season wins, 21, topping last year's what was the record of 20. Yes, I mean, uh, you know, they've had two outstanding seasons back-to-back uh, -back here uh, but again their next step is uh, to win a district title that's that's kind of the goal and uh, tonight's that first step to see and they're going to be playing you know probably the the second best team that's in this district tonight crest you on this even season averaging almost 71 points per game they only give up 47 so didn't get a lot of tests in that firelands conference but they definitely took care of business and justice thompson now in his junior season a soon-to-be two-time All-Ohioan. I mean, the dude shoots with range. He's got great handles. I mean, when he's in rhythm, I think he's one of the best players that I've seen all season. Yeah, and he, you know, he came to play in their in, in their opening uh, tournament game. Uh, was outstanding. Just had 30 points. Um, kind of did everything for him. But he's got a good core group around him. Also, they they've got great balance um, as a team. So uh, he's not the only guy on that Crestview Cougar roster that can score. He's got teammates that can put it in the basket also. 
I mentioned that Firelands Conference, they ended up kind of losing a crazy game in the final seconds at St. Paul, had to share the championship. But outside of those top two teams, and St. Paul didn't even win a playoff game, there wasn't a big collection of talent, Joe, and Crestview, they, they proved they were far and away the cream of the crop. Yeah, I mean, they, they've uh, dominated that league the last two years. Um, and one thing you can't control, you can't control your league play because that's always part of your schedule. Um, uh, they can control their, their non-league, and, you know, they, I, they, they beat Lucas, uh, which is a very good basketball team. Uh, but this, this team with Coach Kurtz, they're going to be ready to play tonight. Take a quick look at the Division Three Norwalk District and how we are able to get to this point so far. As the Cougar is about ready to pounce on the floor. And you see Margareta taking care of Cardinal Stritch and Lakota. Crestview took that first round by. And then lurking in the bottom half, Lake knocking off of Winford. They'll take on Genoa in the second game here tonight. Yeah. I mean, and it's interesting because typically the, the number two seed will go opposite the number one, but uh, Margaret chose to jump right into Crestview's bracket. Uh, I mean, Coach Keller must have a good feeling about how maybe they match up with them. Uh, so you would look at by the seeding that this would typically be a district semifinal game, but or excuse me, a district final game, but tonight it's a district semifinal game. Yeah, a lot of folks feel like the winner of this one likely will go on to win the championship, but who gets it done tonight? We'll break down our keys to victory. And for Crestview, Joe, I'm going with just the land of three. I think if they're able to make about eight or more triples on the night, obviously very advantageous for them. They got about three kids that can really fill it up from long range. That's my key to victory. Well, my key is you just gotta keep, you gotta keep, uh, Margaret off the free throw line. Uh, they shoot, they're an outstanding free throw shooting team. Um, and so in a game, that's, if there's a lot of fouls called, the advantage may go to Margareta. And for Margareta to get it done, my Kissel's long care spraying and painting key to victory. He's got to serve justice. Got to throw a lot of bodies at him, try to frustrate him tonight. Well, and my key is you just got to trust your balance. Uh, Justice Thompson's been outstanding. Jarrett Wrangler's been outstanding. But they've got, they've got a core group of guys around them that can really play the game also. That will wrap up our Kissel's pregame show. That's one to action. Justice and there's Thompson. Justice. Nice little back screen action there. And Justice Thompson uh, on an assist from Jarrett Wrangler. So an excellent start for Crestview, who's going to come out, play half court man-to-man -to, -man to open things up. And this should be a fun matchup. Judah Keller, the point guard. Justice Thompson guarding him. And, uh, and Ringler matched, matched right on uh, um, Julian, Tom, uh, Julian Washington. Bears will swing it into the corner off the baseline drive. The setup and the block shot. Cougars got a piece of it. Second look, not there either. Ringler with the board. Off and running, Ringler, Ringler won't drop. But how about using your head, a little pass off the back of the noggin. And we're gonna get a foul. It's actually gonna be a push off here against Crestview, Joe, on Dylan Bruner. Yeah, missed opportunity there. Kind of had a layup with some pressure, not able to knock it down. Keller, great pace straight to the rack, a little short. Ringler from the right side, cutting back out to get it as Thompson. Sam Wells looking to try to post up inside. He's going to get a travel call. So Wells travels, gives it back over to the Polar Bears. Feels like he's got a size advantage down low against Tyson Bailey, just a freshman. And this is a young roster for the Bears. Got a lot of sophomores and ninth graders that are going to get significant minutes tonight. Here's one of them. Washington takes the bump, still able to finish. Able to get into the low post and with a nice little post move. And Margaret is showing a little bit of 1 2 2 here in the three quarter court. First foul on the Polar Bears goes against Judah Keller. 
Yep, a little bump out top, and uh, they make the call. So each team with one foul apiece here early in the first quarter. Wells from the free throw line, turns. Nice pass. Yeah, great look to Bruder. I think Julian Washington got, maybe got a piece of that. And another, another foul here. Second one already that's going to go against Bruner. He's going to have to check out. Yeah. I mean, game 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 called a little bit tight right now. Um, Keller tried to get it to Washington. Now has to come to the top of the key. Tyson Ringler kind of just matched up him on one-on-one. -on -one. Physical battle for the rebounds. Referees suggest last touch by the Cougars. Take a second look on the scout construction replay. It definitely looks like Keller comes in and swats it out. Yeah, that's that's what I would have called. <laughs> but but I'm not officiating. Washington slick move all the way to the ten. He's off to a really good start for him and playing the front of this press. Yeah, an athletic freak, as I mentioned in the pregame. Thompson gets a switch on him. Double team. Obviously, a lot of attention is going to be applied to the Firelands Conference Player of the Year. Gage Bodley's kind of got the assignment by the Polar Bears of trying to keep Justice Thompson in line here tonight. Yeah, face guarding him all over the floor. Senior doing a nice job up to this point. Goon able to get it to him, though. Justice double tipped, and he volleys it back over to Goon. Yep. He splashes. Good sign there. Goon coming off the bench here and playing well early. Nice head fake, and that one will fall through for Gage Bodie. And the assist by Julian Washington, so he not only has scored, but making his presence known by being able to feed the basketball. He's gonna get another foul on the Polar Bears. It's gonna be on the floor. Just a nice aggressive play on that last oh. for Thompson. But he bobbles the catch off the inbounds here and it's out of bounds for another Crestview turnover, their second. And he, he was gonna be open off that double screen. Nobody had switched out to him. Uh, just not able to, to, to corral that pass. See what the call is here. It's going to be Crestview basketball. First giveaway for the Polar Bears. Tyson Ringler really being aggressive in the passing lane and able to kind of get a deflection. Then it went off of the Polar Bears. But it looks like they almost, almost stole it right back. They're going to take a 30-second timeout here to prevent a 10-second call. It's a home and kitchen supply timeout taken by Coach Kurtz, who went over 400 wins this season, a milestone very few area coaches have surpassed. Yeah, John Kurtz has had a tremendously uh, successful career. Uh, you know, was successful at Crestview early in his career, went to Mansfield Christian, uh, was successful there, and now back at Crestview again, and, uh, you know, has uh, put back-to-back record-breaking seasons for the Cougars. So uh, one of the uh, veteran coaches in the uh, North Central Ohio area and also one of the most successful coaches in the North Central Ohio area. And how many coaches come back to a place that they already coached that after taking yeah. a stint off? That's so yeah. rare. That, 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 that's interesting. Thompson tried to split the pressure but deflected from behind, and the Polar Bears able to pick up the loose basketball. The leadoff, Bodie up and under. Cougars made it tough on him. Able to track it down, they'll keep the possession alive. Washington swings it. Now a tough catch in traffic, too hard off the square. And Ringler corrals. Two-man game, Jarek and Tyson. Nice position down low on the block, can't make the catch. 
A good little action there of uh, getting an inside look, but not able to make the catch on the post pass. Oh, solid take to the rack. A couple of fakes there for Tate Bailey. Eight four now, Margareta. Both both teams doing a good job of getting their hands in passing lanes. We've seen several deflections uh, and the length of Margareta causing a little bit of problem here for the Cougars, especially versus that one two two three quarter court press. Thompson having a tough time trying to find his own shot. Bears playing some great half-court defense. Yep. But Goon. Goon able to get all the way into the lane. Goon stepping up tonight. He's come off the bench, as we said. Has four points here in the first quarter. Backdoor Washington. Catch and shoot from downtown. He's got three baskets. He doesn't need a lot of space there. And uh, you can see why he's one of the better players in the SBC. Plenty of contact, whistle never came. Jarek collects an offensive rebound. Ringler looking to tighten things up. Thompson, Thompson looking to post up a little bit inside. He's right at the free throw line here. He's got the strength to do it. He's really uh, increased he's his but body pass. How about Goon in this yeah. start? Yeah. Coach Kirch has got to be really pleased with that. Washington wants a ball screen. Now hits him with the crossover for Keller. And he'll clock a mid-range. Well, you mentioned at the beginning that uh, Margareta is really good inside the arc. Now they force a turnover here. Great job of Ringler sprinting back. Wow. Oh, the Cougars, if he would have turned to face the basket, they might have had a layup at the other end. Yeah, they would have had a three on nil. Thompson with a tough shot, but able to finish. See if that gets him going. But that's, that's all because of the hustle of Jarrett Ringler getting back. Made a phenomenal play to get it back down to a single possession. Closing 45 seconds of the first quarter, and wow. this dude putting on a show double figures yeah. already for Julian. That is a tough shot. Um, great, I mean, he defended very, very well. It's just a little bit better offense than defense on that possession. So under 30 seconds here, it looks like the Cougars will hold for the last shot of the quarter as they are down five right now. We've seen the last couple of seasons Justice Thompson be an ultimate quarter closer. Lots of makes at the end of frames. They'd love to get him a touch here. Instead, he's a decoy. Sets the screen for Wells. Yep. And he puts it in just before the horn. Trims it back down to three as we head to quarter number two here in the district semis. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Back inside the truck stop, the top two seeds. 
in the Norwalk District going head to head. And we've got a good one going so far. Margareta's up three, they've got the basketball. And now the Crestview bench has it. As the second quarter underway, I'm Brian, Joe Baylog with me here tonight. And excellent start, of course, for Julian Washington. He's got four buckets already on the night. And then off the bench, Goon providing some offense as Keller just short arms that one. Wow. Goon finding himself in a nice offensive rhythm right now. He's going to the free throw line to add to his four point total. Excuse you know, me, he's got six of the Cougars yeah, 12. Yeah, and you know, we saw last night a couple of young players for Colonel Crawford step up. And here's a sophomore kind of making himself known a little bit here in the tournament. Veteran group for the Cougars. A lot of seniors, of course, in the starting lineup and getting plenty of the minutes. And here's a sophomore down on the ground, Washington. Face first. Yep. Good sign for Polar Bear Nation, able to pop up. Looks like he's going to be okay. Going to take him out for, for a minute here just to make sure everything's okay. But just got tangled up a little bit on the rebound with Grayson Bur uh, Burgess. Yeah, Burgess got a nice big wide body. Obviously, very slight frame on the other side for Julian. Love to get it to Thompson here. Back to the basket at the free throw line. And just kind of trying to spread it out around Justice Thompson, putting him in the high post. So it'll be interesting to see if the Cougars can get the ball to him where he wants there. He does. In a low post. And that's where he's really improved, in my opinion, this season. Last uh, year, we knew he could shoot it. This year, he's bulked up, and he's been very strong around the basket. Yeah, and he, you know, he can play a lot of different positions. You can see right now that that's what uh, Coach Kurtz is trying to do, is just get him in some spots where he can get some easy looks at the basket. Polar Bears love this spread look. Cut guys through, see if they can find him in the lane. Yeah, this is kind of the modern way to play basketball. It's just five out, spread offense, look to penetrate and finish, or penetrate and dish. Keller missed it. Offensive rebound by Bailey, and they'll get a wide open shooter, but maybe a draft came through. But an end one coming up for Judah. Yeah, I kind of got lucky they shot an air ball, and sometimes that's the hardest rebound to get. But uh, Keller able to get the rebound and has a chance to go for a three-point play. 56% from the free throw line this season. 35 makes for the sophomore this year. Second year starter is just a sophomore. He and Julian both played a ton of varsity minutes already in their young careers. Yep. Another giveaway here for the Cougars. Their sixth, Washington caught the back iron. Another offensive rebound and a third, maybe no Wells rips it away. You know, Crestview's a team that likes to play fast, and that 1-2-2 two, two has just kind of slowed them down. They've struggled a little bit just getting by. Thompson against Washington. Wow. <laughs> NBA move right there, Joe. That was not an easy shot. So we've seen both of the best players on the floor make some tough shots. And Goon with the bump out top. Foul goes on Goon, his first. Tyson Ringler back on the floor here for the Cougars as Keller looks to inbounds.
And that, uh, uh, you got Jer Jarek Ringler matched up on Washington now. Now they switch Sam Wells. Matches with him inside. And Justice Thompson into the passing lane with the steal. Straight to the cup. Justice starting to heat up now, Joe. Yep. And then the steal, here he goes again. Back to back, it lips out. He'll still get a chance to go to the free throw line. But Thompson, a one-man wrecking crew right now. Last four points and a chance for more. Well, you could see when they ran that play, kind of put him in the high post, and then he was able to catch it in the mid post and just get a basket and finish. Uh, just kind of got him going. And now, you know, he's, he's not only playing well at the offensive end, but the defensive end, he's starting to make some plays also. Got more than half the Cougars' points. Layers on his 11th. As Coach Keller getting in a couple of substitutions. He's been active with the bench so far. Cougar Nation definitely showing out tonight. Quality student section. Bodie sees an opening. Nice hesitation move. Yeah, just not able to finish it though. So Crestview a chance to add to their lead as Ringler pitches it off to another Ringler. Oh, a little too far, Bodie. Nice Phenomenal save, save. And they'll get a clean look from downtown. Boy, they've got a bunch of offensive rebounds and they'll get second chance points here with Washington. He's got 11, as does Thompson. Two leaders in the game. Meanwhile, Jarek going end to end. I mean, that's how Crestview likes to play, is to play fast. So uh, on that possession, even though Margareta scored, they were not able to get into that one, two, two, three quarter court, which we have seen has slowed Crestview down and also give them a little bit of problems as they, as they had a 10 second call and have had a couple turnovers also. Jarek Ringler now 60 makes from the free throw line on the season. He's been there a bunch. And how about the SWAT? Boy, the versatility by 23 on display here. But I think he's gonna draw the personal foul. Might go on Wells. Bumps on both sides. Uh, it's Actually, it's Goon. Goon, yep. So everybody getting in on the contact there. Since Tyson Bailey, the freshman to the stripe. Now Keller, a short break. He'll get right back in for Nolan Wiley. Dylan Bruner back in after getting two early fouls. Replacing Goon who came in and gave great minutes. So kind of interesting here, Margareta's gotten out of that 1-2-2, which you know, it looked like they had caused some, some difficulty. Thompson with a jump stop. Now Ringler baseline, hang time too. Tough finish there. Kind of hung in the air, but the good thing was he was able to put the ball on the glass. Great Perch. help side by Sam Wells there. Now Keller, nice crossover, kicks it out. A lot of head fakes for the Polar Bears. And they'll clamp down in the corner and force a turnover. Wells gets bumped by Washington, who picks up his first foul. And the last to give here for Margareta. Cougars defensive pressure in the half court's picked up a little bit here in the second quarter. They've got some deflections, got their hand on the basketball. Uh, Three-point lead here with just under, just about three minutes to go in the second quarter. Catch and shoot Wells from the corner. And now they'll get Ringler. I think that's gonna, might be his second. Well, I guess it's only his first. And that's his now four fouls five. on both sides. So the next, yeah. we'll put the other in the bonus. And both, both teams shoot free throws very well. So 
Uh, both, either, either team would like to be able to get into that bonus first. Uh, and here it is, came quick. Sam yep. Wells drawing his first personal foul. He's gonna send Keller to the free throw line. That's, yeah, that's, heard a fan behind me just say, that's terrible, you watch the replay, that's not a whole lot there. Well, but you know, they, they kind of set the tone early officiating because they called several bumps and reaches out top early. Um, so sometimes as players, you're just gonna have to make that adjustment a little bit. Back down to a two point game. As Wells looks inside, now we'll get it to Bruder. And just running their base offense here with they they like to throw it to the wing and then the opposite wing cuts off the tail of the point guard cutting through and Justice Thompson going into the post. Yeah, he's a handful down there. Bodie's finding that out right now as he draws his first foul and will send Justice to the stripe. Well, the one thing you got to like about Justice Thompson at the offensive end is he's constantly moving. If he doesn't have the basketball in his hands, he, he's, he's moving. And that, that makes you hard to guard. Um, and now he gets to go to the free throw line with two free throws here. Thompson having one of the best single season scoring seasons in Crestview history. I, I think third all time. Yeah. And win or lose, you're happy he's gonna come back with your John Kurtz. Yeah, he's really set the tone. Even last year as a sophomore, yeah. Coach Kurtz told me his work ethic, I mean, it really rubbed off on some of the older kids. Yeah, yeah that's that's one of the things I've, you, I've heard a lot from these kids the past two years is just their desire to get better uh, by how hard they work in the off season. Thompson absorbs the contact, read it well off the rim. Washington's out ahead of the pack, but they're gonna miss him. A little late with the toss down court. So Coach Keller is gonna call their first timeout. It's a home and kitchen supply TO. And it's 13-8 in favor of Crestview here in the second quarter. Definitely heating up on the offensive end of things. Slow start, and you're right. I think the adjustment for Margareta on the defensive end, Crestview matches up a little bit better against that man-to-man, -man, it seems. Yeah, I mean, that that one 2, two in the three-quarter court, although they really weren't looking to trap, um, they'd gotten a 10-second call, and I think they'd gotten two turnovers, so it's just interesting that they have not gotten back into that, especially, all, you know, they've gotten into it off of made baskets. Um, they really haven't done that. So let's see here coming out of the timeout if they get back into that one 2, two in the three-quarter court. And it looks like they're just going to match up them in man-to-man -man in the half court. And it'll start in the hands of Ringler, walking it across the timeline. He gets picked up by Bailey. Thompson tried to sell a foul up top. And they're being really physical with him. And he's creating a lot of that contact and earns himself another trip back to the charity stripe. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's why he can score because he's a smart player, understanding that, you know, any foul now, I'm going to the line and getting two free throws. So, you know, when he's caught the ball, uh, he knows he's getting pressured. He's been aggressive, taking the ball into the lane and creating contact. Average is better than 23 a game. He's got 14 already here in the first half. Well, he got off to a great start in the sectional final and is off to another great start here tonight. And as we mentioned, I think Julian Washington had 11 in the first quarter, correct? Uh, I was wrong. I think he had nine. He had he had, nine. He's got so, two so, so far here. He's got two here. And kind of kind of has not been the factor that he was early in the basketball game. Yeah, he's deferred a little bit more yeah. offensively. And deflection. meanwhile, Crestview, they're kind of putting their foot on the gas at that end. Yep. Tyson Ringler with a just being aggressive defensively gets another deflection. So interesting matchup now here. Julian Washington is on. Uh, Justice Thompson. Jerry, great, nice great, head great shot shoulder fake. fake. 
This is a big shot here if Sam Wells can knock it down. And that's his sweet spot. Yep. Sam Wells from the corners, he's always looking to get his. Nice feed by Washington. Yeah. Banks open for Gage Bodie. Well. Another three, opposite Bruner. corner, a little short. Tyson keeps it alive, and they'll set it right back up for him. And Tyson Ringler just doing the things he does. He's being a really good defender, making the hustle plays at the offensive end to get to the offensive glass. Largest lead for either side at a swell to nine. As Keller checks the clock, 15 seconds showing. They'll hold for the final shot of the frame. Uh, you can anticipate it's probably going to get in Julian Washington's hands somehow here. Back door cut. Great catch oh. and one coming for the sophomore. Number one, that was not an easy pass. Number two, that was not an easy catch. <laughs> Number three was not an easy finish. So uh, really nice play there by Julian Washington. Tough play all the way around. And I was about to say, he looked disinterested in the play. Lowell and his defender uh, to sleep and then well, charged back but door. But you, you saw the Crestview assistants. They knew this play was coming and they were screaming and uh, really did not defend it that bad poorly. Just that they made a great pass to him and he made a great catch. Oh, got a Wells, chance, got, got a, a chance, Wrangler. got a chance here. <laughs> Would have been big, but Crestview flexing in that second quarter. 21-12 run for them. Puts them ahead, heading into the locker rooms. Stay tuned for the Kissels Lawn Care Spraying and Painting Halftime Report. Joe and I will tell you what we saw in the first two quarters, give you the first half stats, get you all set for quarter number three. You're enjoying live and free tournament basketball right here on the OH Report. Hi, I'm Always Report founder Brian Skaronski, and you've just enjoyed first half action live and free exclusively right here on the OH Report. But stick around, still plenty more to come right here as our boys high school basketball returns. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Nobody else gets you closer to the action than our exclusive coverage. So give me a call, Brian Skaronski, and let's make you a part of the game.
Visit ArcelorMiddle.com and click Careers for landscaping, spraying, and painting. Contact Kissels for all of your snow plowing, which we hope is over with for the season. But for next year, keep them in mind. Definitely your spraying projects, painting, and all of your lawn care needs springs on the way. Hit up Dave at the number in the description. Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. Scout Construction Services, LLC. With more than a decade of business, you can trust Scout with your roofing and siding needs. Call Scout Construction for more information, 419-989-7240. Ask for Josh, tell him Brian sent you. I don't know if it occurs you any favors, but find out, let me know what he says. Simonson Construction Services, Inc. From concept to completion, they can build you a plan, refine your vision, and build a path for success. Those are the generous sponsors that bring you free coverage here on the OH Report. We will always be live and free. That's what we want to do for you guys, especially during tournament time. We'll be right back. We will have your Kissels landscaping, spraying, and painting halftime report in just a moment. truck stop as we welcome you back to Norwalk for the Kissel's Lawn Care Halftime Show. Two quarters in the books and the number one seed on top right now by six, 33-27. I'm Brian Skronsky, the Hall of Famer Joe Baylog is joining me on the call here tonight. And we saw Margareta get off to a really nice start. They were in control of things, I would say, in the first quarter. Crestview flipped the script there in the second. Now they've kind of taken command. Big push, outscored. Margareta by nine there in the frame. And that's why they're in the lead here out of the halftime locker show. Well, and our two featured players both have stepped up and are off to great start. Julian Washington with 14, Justice Thompson with 15. I think one of the key players though so far in the game has been Carter Goon though. Uh, Dylan Bruner picked up his second foul early and Goon came in. I think he has what, eight points I believe. Uh, so that's been a big, big lift off the bench uh, for the Crestview Cougars. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if anybody kind of steps up uh, for the Polar Bears here 
Um, it kind of complements Julian Washington's effort here in the second half. Yeah, Washington's got 14. Judah's chipped in with six. Nobody outside of them has more than one field goal so far in the game as we will jump into your statistics brought to you by Kissel's Lawn Care. And Polar Bears, just one turnover in the first quarter. They had four in the second. Crestview, totally opposite. Yep. They had five in the first quarter, cleaned it up, only had one there in the second quarter, Joe. They got to the free throw line in an abundance there in the second quarter and really helped them kind of stretch out the gap a little bit in that second. Well, the one thing that we mentioned was uh, the Polar Bears started off of a made basket. We're in that one, two, two, three quarter court. Not, not really looking to trap, but looking just maybe to kind of slow Crestview down and they did a good job of that. Had a 10 second call, um, also created a couple turnovers and then uh, the Polar Bears got out of that uh, late in the first quarter and throughout the second quarter. So be interesting to see if they jump back in that after they score, because that seemed to cause Crestview some problems. Uh, Crestview was much more, more efficient when they were able to just get the ball in the half court and get into their half court offense and uh, really kind of find Justice Thompson in a lot of different spots. There's no question about it. We mentioned the five turnovers they had in that opening quarter. A lot of it was coming on their end of the floor, mm -hmm. just getting sped up. A lot of athleticism, plenty of length up top there with Washington running the point. So you got to imagine Coach Keller and company, they've been trying to pressure teams pretty much all season that they'll get back into that phase here at some point in the second half. Well, and as we I've said many, many times, the first three minutes many times are key, and sometimes the first three possessions are key. So if you're crusty, you have the ball out of bounds. You get a score here, you get a stop, and then you get a potential for another score, and you can get this basketball game right to double digits. Flip it around, <laughs> Margareta gets a stop. They get a score and another stop. They got a chance that they can get it back to like a two-point basketball game. So uh, always like the first three possessions here in, in, of the second half just to see kind of how teams respond. I'm with you, Joe, and also to see what kind of adjustments are made yep. by the coaching staffs. Well, and it looks like well, they, they're man-to-man. No, it looks, uh, I don't know what they're doing, Joe. I think it's some kind of a zone. They're, they're looking like they might be trying to match up here. Definitely switching everything up top. They'll get Thompson on a tough catch in the lane, and he can't make it. Oh, Julia Washington on a run out here. And he takes a bump left hand, just missed it off the rim. And Bruner with a great hustle play to get that defensive rebound. A lot of Polar Bear fans thought perhaps Washington should be on the free throw line right now. Yeah, it looks like they're into, into like a matchup zone here, out of, out of a 1-2-2 two, two look. The Thompson looking to shoot it from deep, rims out. That's his first look from downtown so far in the game. As we get Bodie going end to end, and the freshman bells him out, Bailey from down low with the second chance points. And Thompson with a tough catch. And again, it's ripped away this time, it's Gage Bodie. Keller with a nice pass. Oh, but what a block from yep. Wrangler. Wrangler coming across and help side, be able to get the block. And this is something that Jarek's known for, his weak side defense. I think he averages about two blocks per game. Well, and that's usually where you're going to get block shots, just coming from the weak side. And there he gets a deflection. Thompson looking to go to work. Crestview looking to diagnose and figure out what yeah. the Polar Bears are showing here on the defensive end. I mean, it's just kind of a matchup zone it looks out of a 1-2-2 two, two look. So um, showing something different here. And I'm not sure if, if uh, Margaret has played this much that this year as we have not been able to see them. But right now seems to be confusing uh, the Cougars just a little bit as they're not getting much player movement at all with this. Nice jab fake for Thompson. And he's just so deadly with that jump stop. He, he crashes well, right into you, Joe, and forces the contact. Well, we talked a lot last night with Colonel Crawford about their ability to play off a of two feet on the penetration. You know, a lot of kids are being taught Euro steps, um, but you're so much stronger when you go off two feet, and that's what Thompson's able to do. It looks like it's a travel because he takes such a big hop, but he lands on both feet, and then he has the strength and power that he can kind of just go over top or through people, and he's being able to create contact. That's why he averages over 20-some points a game, because he gets to the free throw line a lot. So be a 17th if he knocks it down, cannot. 
So Thompson has left a little food on the table of the charity stripe tonight, a second miss. As Bodie looking for his deflected. Strong play inside for Keller. So yeah. Judah Keller. Ringler got hit, I think, right in the, in the mouth or the nose. I mean, Bodie's done a really good job of being able to get to the lane. He has just not been able to finish. Has had several shots go hard off the glass or been short. Um, but Keller with the big offensive rebound there. But this is an area that Keller's struggled through the years. We said he shoots 56% from line and a little bit goofy because I think he's their best three-point shooter. Able to knock down the second here on this trip. Yeah. As a deficit back down to four. Yeah. It looked like they were going to get that one, two, two, but just never got into it quick enough. And you well, can see the Thompson being really aggressive on the catch. And that's where he can really beat you, that acceleration. Yeah. He's got an excellent jab fake as well. This time he goes back door. He'll kick it to the corner. Three is up. And Bruner off the back iron. Good box out there by Bodie. Kind of pushed Sam Wells out of the way. Julian Washington. Hang time for Taze. 16 matches justice for the tops in the game. It's a 5-1 spurt here for the Polar Bears. Make Big it 5-4. I mean, Dylan Bruner's missed a couple threes, but shows no fear there, knocking that one down. Just the second made triple of the night for the Cougars. Margareta's only made one. Here's the freshman. A little lob, missed it. Now Jarek looking to push the pace. Sweet feet inside. Tyson definitely thought he got fouled by Washington. There was some contact there, but no call. Bears will realign. And Jarek with the pressure. It Pushed it out of bounds. You know, Jarek Ringler's done a lot of little things tonight. Deflections, although that really wasn't a deflection. Just his pressure in the passing lane forces a turnover. Made it a tough catch for the senior Bodie. And Carter Goons checks back in for Dylan Bruner. Yeah, they're very similar style players, actually. I, I like that they complement each other. When one leaves, the other comes in and fills kind of the same role. Thompson in the low post here. Clear it out now for Ringler. Uh -huh. Cougars not rushing anything on this huh? possession. Coach Kurtz likes what he sees. Now here's Justice coming off the screen, poked out of his hands. It's a great catch by Sam Wells. Cougars burned up about 50 seconds now on this possession. Thompson off the handoff, draws a double team, forces it up. I think he's anticipating a whistle. And as Tyson goes flying out of bounds, it'll belong to the Polar Bears. So a lot of clock yeah, yeah. burns and a lot of clock and a lot of contact. So, yeah, they they kind of called called some early contact now here in the second half. Maybe not calling quite as much. Bears will swing it. Look for a lob play there to Washington. Bailey Justin Thompson. Yeah, referees letting a lot of things slide yeah. here. At least being consistent at both ends. As Keller. Boy, he's so patient with that fake. Yeah, they're just letting the play right now. A lot different than it was here early in the game. Tournament basketball, baby. Got to be ready for it. 
Well, and that's where you just got to be stronger with the basketball. You got to sweep it low. Got to have some toughness with what you do. Coach, Coach Kurt's going to use a timeout here. Second charge timeout to Crestview tonight. It's a home and kitchen supply, T.O. 5-4. The slimmest margins owned here by Margareta in the third. And we've been stuck on this score, it seems like, for about three minutes here, Joe, with yeah. a lot of that contact, I think, at both ends. Yep. A couple of players thought they were going to go to the free throw line, and it never came. Well, and, and, you know, to win these games, a lot of it sometimes just comes down to toughness, not just physical toughness, but your mental toughness of when something doesn't go your way to, to, to be able to go to the next play. Um, and so that's going to be important, um, you know, here in the next 10 minutes of this basketball game. The big Cougar basketball on the side out just in front of the scores table where Joe and I have the pleasure of sitting tonight. Don't often get to get this close to the action. We got the front row. <laughs> Thompson turns into a little trouble and off the bench, the senior kicks it right back to him. Oh, nice spin move. Just not able to get it on the glass though. Bears pushing it the other way and knocked out of bounds. Yeah. Jarrett Ringler, kind of the guy defensively right now. Been making a lot of plays. And Coach Keller talking to the officials now. And there he is again. Yeah, Jarrett has been unbelievable on the defensive end. Trying to get some on the uh, offensive side. Count it! Unbelievable finish there, Brian. Jared Ringler taking on a pair of defenders. Worry free. Big collision. And nice sportsmanship there at the end. Yeah. yeah. Two teams playing really hard, but good to see opponents help each other up off the floor. But a tremendous play. I mean, he's he's had a lot his hands on a lot of basketballs at the defensive end of the floor tonight. Ringler now has six points. Averages 11 on the season. The acceleration. Keller, Keller using his strength against Justice Thompson there. Again, quite a bit of contact, Brian, but no call. Jarek, a little push off. Keller hit the uh, deck. Uh, Keller pair of fans losing their minds. <laughs> Jarek with the pitch out, Goon. Lost his balance as he went around the back. So did a couple polar bears. Now Thompson will draw a whistle. You know, for a sophomore, Goon, nice strength, good quickness. Uh, his play off the bench has been, has been a big lift for the Cougars tonight. Nice play by Justice Thompson from start to finish there to bell out a falling over teammate. And he'll turn it into an opportunity for a couple points. Cougars led by as many as nine in the second quarter. This can push it back out to eight. Have not seen Julian Washington get a lot of looks here really after the first quarter. And he's a player, tremendous athletic ability, can get his own shot, but doesn't really look to take guys off the bounce that often. No. Got plenty of teammates that can do that for him. That's a tough shot. Keller forcing well, that one just a bit. And I'm going to anticipate here that the Cougars are going to look for the last shot of the quarter here chance to take it to a double digit lead going into the fourth. Judah puts the five second clock on. Oh, it's off now. And you can see the constant movement of Justice Thompson. Oh boy, he just blitz Keller. And a big basket. Huge swing for the Cougars. And look at Judah's eye, boy, he's bleeding everywhere. 
Judah Keller cannot believe there was no call, and I saw it was right in front of the show. Show you a second look at the three-pointer that was knocked down. That was a huge basket by Grayson Burgess. The Polar Bear Nation up on their feet. They are stunned. And obviously, Coach Keller is pissed off. I mean, that's his kid. Yeah. Can we show that replay of Justice Thompson on the screen? I mean, the referees, they have really let him bang here. Yeah, we're going to rewind it a little bit and show you the contacts. Now they're going to have to get somebody out here to clean the blood off the floor. Yeah, there's droplets all over the place. So here it is, Joe. I mean, he almost looked like a half punch. Coach Keller demanding that the referees come over and talk to him and get the cold shoulder from a couple. All right. And here comes the athletic director, Josh Slaughter, to save the day and clean up the blood. One more look here, Joe. Check this out. I mean, I don't think it was intentional. Um, I mean, just kind of kind of happens, uh, it, but but probably, I mean, could have easily been called a foul. Yeah, I thought the extended arms of Justice is what would have drew, drew a personal, but instead, they set up the three-pointer and Burgess knocks it down, and we yeah. got a double-figure game here. Yeah. Judah Keller still getting some attention over on the sideline. And his jersey covered in blood, so he swapped out with one of the younger players. And I think the cut was above one of his eyes. Yeah, I would, I would be surprised if he's going to be able to get back in because as quickly as that was bleeding, it looks like it's going to have to have stitches. I mean, I, I you would think it was going to have to have stitches, possibly. But you never know. Kids are kids are pretty tough. And I've been following Judah since he was in eighth grade, playing for Ohio Buckets. Kids played a lot of basketball, got great strength and determination. Coach's kid. I'm sure he's going to do everything he can to get back on the floor for this fourth quarter. Yep. But a lot of work to do here for yep. this blood cleanup crew. Yeah, because he, he kind of was all over the floor after it happened, so a lot of spots out here. Both student sections having a little back and forth fun. While they clean up the blood, we will take one short commercial timeout. We'll be back for the final three seconds of the third here in just a bit.
Back for the final three seconds here of the third quarter after a bit of a wild collision. Justice Thompson into Judah Keller, who lost a lot of blood, a cut over his forehead, and it looks like Justice also, yeah. now, now he's got a Band-Aid on his chin. Yeah, I think his chin hit, hit him right above the eyes, I think is what happened. So a big collision leading to an even bigger three-pointer in the first points of the night for Burgess. That's our camera guy, Brandon Powell, down on the sideline. Well, Getting you, I mean, can you get closer to the action than that, Joe? Look at this. Well, you know, and the, the thing that, after all this, the interesting thing is we've talked about the balance that Crestview shows, and you have a guy like Burgess that has not played a lot of minutes but hits a big, big three right now here at the end of the third quarter. So, um, Big thing for Margareta is Coach Keller's going to have to try to get his team refocused here with 3.1 seconds to go in the third, and then they'll get the basketball to start the fourth. So let's see if, if they can make some kind of play here at the end of the third to give them some momentum to go on, go on into the fourth quarter. Certainly love to get it under 10 if you can. Washington on the hop, down to two seconds. Pitches, left-hander puts it up, and it's just a little bit short there for Nolan Wiley. So we will head to money time after a 12-7 score for the Cougars, who lead it by 11. Judah Keller back on the bench, and as we're here on the sideline, Joe, can you just remind me what time it is real quick? Money time. That's right, baby. <laughs> we have made it to money time. Fourth quarter action is here, and the winner will be back here on Saturday for the district championship. Margareta going to need to make an excellent comeback to have it be them as Gage Bodie. has been aggressive offensively all night. Earns himself a trip to the free throw line. <laughs> Justice Thompson kind of asking what he did. Picked up his first foul. Justice has 18. And Bodie's a 90% free throw shooter. And now he's got six points. Easy money for him. And here's that full court pressure that gave the Cougars problems early in the contest. Thompson hit on the wrist. He didn't get the call. Yeah. Bodie off the baseline. Pokes away. Wells draws the personal. Another look on the scout construction yep. replay. Called it on the floor. So two quick fouls in the first 29 seconds on Crestview. Meanwhile, Bodie. Bowling ball inside. Thompson off the screen, crossover. He'll try the three. Hasn't been able to find the stroke from long range yet. Mid-range jumper, a little too far. 
Polar Bears keep it alive as it changes hands. But the Cougars hold them without points. Catch and shoot for Ringler in and out. Tyson Ringler on the glass. And Jarek with another three. Now Justice tied up, ball squirts loose. We're going the other way. So a few little breaks going in favor of the Polar Bears. As they'll get the basketball back. Down by just nine and a huge ovation for Judah Keller is back on the floor. Backdoor look to Washington. They able to defend it. But he hit that shot here in the first. And he gets hit this time. And the third foul on the Cougars. And one of the strengths we said of this Margareta team is their ability as a team to make free throws as they shoot 73%. And Washington is an 83% free throw shooter. So the big thing here is Margaret the chance to cut in the lead by just getting to the free throw line, but Washington misses the first. Makes the second. And now here comes the pressure. Cougars evade it quickly this time. But Keller snakes in and pokes it away. Judah Keller. Know, that, and the thing three. that Crestview's done a little bit better against that is they, they've gone quicker. Early in the game, they kind of set up the press. Here they've just chosen to just kind of attack it uh, really early. Keller being very aggressive here yeah. offensively. And now they'll get a tip. Bodie up ahead of the pack. Wild shot high off the glass. 5-0 run for the Bears. Yeah. Thompson maybe a half carry right there. Well, uh, there's a lot of contact right now. And Crestview's just going to have to be really strong with the basketball here. They blitz him backside, and a foul is going to be called against Aiden Miller on the defense. Getting a chunk there of the arm. That's just the first, though, on Margareta. A lot, a lot of, of high end contact right now. But, you know, Jarrett Wrangler's made some really nice plays. That's another nice one. And Sam Wells able to finish. Wells now with seven. Nice hook pass to the corner, spins out. It'll stay at this end. Love the dish here, though, by Washington. Yeah, great pass. And, and the big thing right now for the Cougars, they just got to go to the next play because it seems like. The loose basketballs aren't bouncing their way. They just got to be able to go to the next play here. Try to withstand the run here that the Polar Bears are trying to put on here early in the fourth quarter. Off the crossover, Washington's bumps. Number four bound. on the Cougs. But again, just about five minutes to go, and Crestview has four team fouls. Second foul on Tyson Ringler. Well, Coach Kurtz and the official having a few words all the way across the floor. Keller left alone, can't bury it. Uh, Second chance, no. Third opportunity, knocked out of the hands that time of Bailey. Uh, Cougars got points on their last possession with uh, Wells. He gets stripped here. But it goes out of bounds, just running out of real estate with Bodie. Just got to put that ball kind of under your chin, get it to your chest, and be a lot stronger with it here. Thompson has it tipped. Good with the catch underneath. Sam Wells. Wells, nice pump fake. Took his time, but missed it in tight. As Washington takes a bump, is he fouled? Referees discuss. Got a foul. Wow, so that'll lead to free throws for an 80 percenter. Oh 
So in the bonus with more than half of the four still remaining. And again, chance for Margareta to cut into this deficit without the clock running. And as we mentioned earlier, Washington an 83% free throw shooter. Yep. This the front half, both of his last two trips. Much to the delight of the Cougar Nation. And Bruner going to check back in for Goon, the senior. Washington gets him to 40 points. Seven point lead for Crestview. I look over the top. Yeah, they had Thompson and Ringler. They got him. Here he Let's is. See what Thompson does here. Little fake. Can't splash it home, but coming up a little yeah. bit gimpy. Trying to walk it off. Yeah, the contact there actually knocked out the camera feed for our baseline. <laughs> Try to get that back up and running. There's a conversation going on with Justice about that. Hey, always reports trying to get all the great views. Do you have to hit the camera guy? Might have bloodied him up. Uh, might be, might be blood from the, the the previous possession, or the previous situation we had. Could have just dried on his shoulder. Just gonna wipe it off. And as I have Judah Keller, just a couple feet from us now, I see definitely the blood came from the left side of his cheekbone. And he was just talking to the official. He pointed at it. And he said, "This isn't worthy of a whistle." <laughs> Good point. This will put Thompson at 20 points on the night. Stretch the lead back out to nine. You know, and Thompson, a really good free throw shooter also. Is, I think about three for six maybe tonight. Yeah, he's right at 50%. He's actually accounted for all the misses for Crestview. And Crestview going to show a little 2-3 zone here. Give so. Margareta something to think about. Yeah. Keller off the screen. And an offensive wow. foul. Moving screen. Yep. A go on Nolan Wiley. I mean, good, good set there because Keller's their best three-point shooter. And he had him open for a look, but called for an illegal screen. So the Cougars, four minutes to go. They are up eight. Nice snag and a better pitch down court. Oh, that's maybe an intentional. Just be a common foul. Right. I don't know if it'll be a shooting foul, though. Well, it's got to be at least a shooting foul. Dylan Bruner is going to set up at the free let's, throw line. Let's take a look at this. Uh, I think that's pretty close to an intentional foul. Different games, but in the NBA, when you start grabbing around the head and neck yeah. area, that's where it changes everything. That'd be a flagrant one, and we'd review it for a flagrant two. That's right. <laughs> they can come over and check our feed if they want on our monitors. <laughs> Bruner's played well in limited stretches yeah. tonight. Had a big three. Now, now, I mean, a great shot fake there and going to the free throw line with a chance to convert both of them here. And nice shooting touch. Gets so the Cougars the back up by 10. And there's our guy, Jarrett Ringler, getting in a passing lane. Haven't seen, I mean, we have not, we've seen Crestview uh, several times. I don't think we've ever seen him play zone here, Brian. And they're in a 2-3 zone right now. Leave it to a guy with 400 wins to dig yep. into the bag of tricks. Well, as we said, in the district tournament, sometimes you're going to show something that maybe you've never shown all year. Washington with a big rebound. And that's the one thing when you go zone is that many times you don't have a man responsibility, and sometimes you just don't put bodies on people enough. So you need to really put a body on Julian Washington, because he's such a tremendous athlete. 
Buries the first free throw this time. Missed the front end the last two trips. And he sinks them both. Timeout taken by Coach Keller. They've got three left. So does Crestview. And they've inched a little bit closer here in this fourth quarter, Joe. Yep. Outscored the Cougars by three. They're giving, yeah. giving themselves a yeah. shot here. But it, but is but is maybe kind of as the as this fourth quarter seems like it's been owned by the Polar Bears. Um, the Cougars got to be happy they got an eight point lead because they you know they've only been able to, to cut three out of the deficit. So I would anticipate you're going to see full court pressure here by Margareta, and then. Uh, you know, in the next foul, the Cougars get to go to the free throw line That's also. Right. So, big thing is here, you got to just be strong with the basketball if you're Crestview because you, you know it's going to get physical. Well, and like it hasn't been physical <laughs> yet. <laughs> yeah, the second half, man, how much contact can one game well, have? You can see they're trying to deny the entry pass right away. Threw it over the top, and they got lucky here. And Tyson Ringler's got a chance, but Washington blocks it. Ringler not able to secure the rebound and then foul. Yeah, a careless foul right there. It's going to lead to some free throws. That, that, it, that was a big play. Had a chance to score, had a second chance to get it, and then made the foul. So, again, Margareta able to go to the free throw line to cut into this lead without the clock running. It's a freshman, though, in a big spot for Kel Bailey. Cool as a cucumber on the first. Yep, and Bailey a 54% free throw shooter for the year. But a freshman in a big spot here. Tomley knocks them both down, two score game. Excellent catch by Goon, able to get into the front yeah. court, but he's got his pocket picked. Washington with a two on two, splits the gap to the rack. The Cougars lead evaporating. Thompson with an excellent catch, and he wants a timeout. We are in for an entertaining finish here inside the truck stop. All the momentum flowing in favor of the Bears. Well, one of the things you need to remember is if you have the basketball out in front and teams are pressuring you, our rule was always if the ball's in your right hand, take two dribbles and you got to put it in your left because somebody's coming behind you. And in that situation, uh, Goon kept it in his right hand and the sprint from behind to get the deflection, the turnover, and then Julian Washington able to go to the basket and finish it. So Margareta has outscored Crestview by seven here in the fourth. As we look back at that critical play, Almost a big break for Crestview. Yeah. They were trying to get into the hands of Thompson, ended up with Ringler. Washington yeah. kept his composure, didn't jump until the right moment. Then he gets the big basket. Large change of events right there. I mean, but a good timeout by Justice Thompson. He was in a trap situation, had his back turned to the basket, preventing a live ball turnover. Cougars have not played many close games this season, nope. Joe. Nope. So this is a challenge for him right now. Things tightening up down the stretch. Final three minutes and change. Jarek Ringler had to pick it up. Now we'll get it across. Just don't panic here. And Washington just blows up the play as Thompson hits the deck. Second foul on Julian. He's up a little bit gippy after the contact. Well, oh. as we've already seen, you run into Justice Thompson. <laughs> Justice Justice has put put together pretty well. Yeah, he's really improved on his body. From I mean, you you look at his year. his lower body. His legs are really really strong. That's why I went out in the offseason and get a tattoo, Joe. Anytime <laughs> you get bulky like that, you got to get some ink to show it off. <laughs> Oh, uh, split him again. Uh, split him again here tonight. So Justice, four of eight from the foul line. 
Here's Judah with the kick out. The freshman launches and hits. Threw it out of bounds. Wow, the Cougars. Their lead down to two, and they chuck it into their own bench. I mean, our rule was if you're going to throw that baseball pass, you have to throw it to the basket. Never throw it to the sideline, because if it's to the basket, you can run underneath of it. So the Polar Bears have fought back and have a chance to tie it or take the lead here. They'll start with Washington. Yep, he's going to go right to the basket. And we're tied. He'll head to the free throw line with a chance to take the lead. Polar Bear Nation going bananas. And the Cougars losing their composure just a little bit. They'll need to settle things down. Big rebound there for Ringler. Now they leave Wells wide open. Nice closeout by Washington. Pick up the basketball and be strong with it. Crestview's got him spread out. Wells loses it into the corner, recollects, and he traveled. Fourteenth turnover for Crestview. It comes at a critical moment. Margareta has seized all the momentum. Now they'll get Washington point blank, blew it. Keller with the pitch out. Shots good. The first lead for the Polar Bears since early in the second frame. Boy, what a comeback. I mean, the, the big thing is they were able to get a lot of points with the clock being stopped. Um, so crucial situation here now. Let's see how Crestview responds. Their cheering section over on the Margareta side really liked something Coach Keller just said to his boys. As they have come storming back down big double figures here in this fourth 19-6 run. It's been impressive. Yep. I mean, that's district basketball plays uh, some of the toughest basketball you, you see throughout the season um, so both teams displaying some toughness here tonight uh, right now Crestview's got a has some physical toughness but more importantly that maybe mental toughness here just to be able to make a play Cougars seldom pushed at all this season a lot of double digit victories so a little bit of unfamiliar territory for him. See how the Cougars respond, final 91 seconds. They continue to turn up the heat defensively. Cougars gotta get it over, they just do. Thompson's got a chance to score. Oh, Washington meets him at the rack. Julian with the pass inside, Bodie the head fake, four point game. Cougars having a tough time getting into the front court. Now they will. Yep. Plenty of time here. And Keller called for the reach in. That's going to put Justice Thompson on the free throw line. Had him wrapped around the waist. Yep. So Justice Thompson. He said he split most of his free throws tonight. Important he makes both of these. He's a clutch performer. You would highly anticipate him drilling this second. Right about at his season average. He's got 21. Puts up 23 per contest on the year. But again, he Sam missed Wells it. with a big rebound. 
Knocked out of his hands by Washington. Great effort by Sam Wells to get that rebound. Let's see if they can get something off the inbounds play here. Don't have to go for a three just yet. Nope. Ringler explodes yeah. to the cup. One point game. And the Cougars laying back. Now they'll come up in pressure. Timeout, Coach Keller. Good timeout, because that was a bad spot to drive the basketball with, with no opening. But you see that quarter score, 21 to nine. Margareta has owned money time here tonight. Credit the Cougars, though. They've got the last three points, gotten themselves right back into it. And for the Polar Bears, a lot of good free throw shooters on the team. Well, they, they had Kel Bailey there, the freshman, with the baseline drive. You're right, that wise timeout taken by Margareta. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's going to be the tough thing. You don't, you don't really want to put uh, Bodie at the line. He's a 90% free throw shooter. You don't want to put Washington at the line. He's an 83% shooter. And Bailey's a 73% or 77% shooter. The one area of Judah Keller's game that he huh? struggles a bit might be at the uh, charity stripe. So you, you probably want to look to put Judah Keller or Kale Bailey at the line if you can. Because Tate Bailey shoots 77% also. So Gage will be the trigger man. He'll try to sneak it into Washington. I walked. Oh. Timeout came first. That's going to be the last for the Polar Bears. But this was dangerously close to a travel. Yeah, <laughs> really close. <laughs> really, really close. Final full timeout of the night. It's a home and kitchen supply timeout. Entertaining finish here, Joe. Yep. Been a lot of fun here tonight. If you're joining us late, it was the Margareta show in the first quarter. Crestview dominated the second. Kind of stayed out yep. in front there yep. in the third. We had a big collision at the end of the third quarter with three seconds left. The bloody both Judah Keller and Justice Thompson. And then it looked early on in the fourth like Crestview was going to coast into the district championship, and all of a sudden, a three-minute yeah. stretch. I think it was like a 10-0 run for Margareta. Yeah. Changed yeah. everything. Yeah, we said that with about the four-minute mark that Crestview kind of maintained. I think it was at about a nine-point lead, and then all of a sudden, Margareta made some unbelievable plays. and uh, They have a one-point lead with 23 seconds left in the ballgame. This time they'll start in a box formation. Judah to inbound. And that's the guy they wanted to get it to. Bodie fouled and he drills it. Ginormous shot knocked down by Gage Bodie. And the senior, a 90%er, can add one more. Big play on the baseline out of bounds. Boy, that's huge, because this can make it a two-score game. Yep. Nothing but net. Coach Kurtz is going to let it ride. Two timeouts in his back pocket, and now he'll spend one. Boy, great, great play at the other end there on the last possession for Gage Bodie, the senior. He's had a nice night. Yeah, just kind of a, must have been a miscommunication on the screen across because it was just really one screen and made a great inbounds pass, a good shot fake and took the contact and finished and made the three-point play. See a lot of comments flying in on our Facebook and YouTube streams, making you part of the action. Got a lot of them scrolling through here on the fan zone and over a thousand of you watching combined on our two platforms. Excellent viewing audience for an excellent game tonight. 
Don't often see the top two seeds meeting outside of a district championship game. Margareta going after Crestview on the brackets and looking to make the most of their decision here tonight. This is the final four. Genoa and Lake will be the second half played here tonight. As the Cougars, one last shot. Try to make this a one score game. Down to 12 seconds. Got to get it up pretty quick. It's going to be Thompson, fall away jumper. Missed it. Long rebound to the Polar Bears. And it looks like they are going to be marching into Saturday's final. That's <laughs> Jew to throw Washington to the ground in a celebration. Really challenging shot there by Justice. Credit the defense of the Polar Bears. Nothing yeah. open. And a big embrace between Thompson and Keller. Two Warriors battling it out tonight. Two big free throws should all but close the door. Margareta with a 26 point fourth quarter. Storms back. They will move on to the district championship on Saturday. Unbelievable finish here tonight. We'll take a quick commercial break. We'll be back. We'll talk to our most valuable player. Drop us some comments. Let us know who you think is worthy of being tonight's MVP. You'll hear from that player. Plus, we'll have the final stats, analysis, get you set up for the second game here tonight with a little preview. Live and free coverage of tournament basketball returns right after this. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Thanks to these amazing sponsors. Hey, Frank. Big thank you to Kissel's Landscaping, Spraying and Painting. You can contact Kissel's for all of your spraying and painting lawn care needs. Hit up Dave. Also, snow plowing when it rolls back around. Here we might get snow tomorrow. Heck, you might need to call Dave soon. 
Scout Construction Services, LLC. With more than a decade of business, you can trust them with your roofing and siding needs. Call Scout Construction for more info, 419-989-7240. Home and Kitchen Supply, your one-stop shop for kitchen and baths, windows and doors since 1970. Simonson Construction Services, Inc. From concept to completion, Simonson can help you make a plan, refine your vision, and build a path for success. And by Arcelor Middle, smarter stills for people and planet. Hiring that with competitive wages and benefits. Visit ArcelorMiddle.com, click Careers, and check it out for more details if you're looking for a new change and want some big money. We'll be right back here inside of the truck stop. We will hear from Julian Washington, the Arcelor Middle Most Valuable Player. And then Joe and I will wrap things up here from Norwalk. Kissel's Lawn Care. There's no job too big or too small for us to handle. With top-of-the-line equipment, we are guaranteed to complete your next landscaping job efficiently and professionally. A hard-working, dedicated team is what we take pride in, bringing to every job to make sure the results are the best they can be. So the next time you have a landscaping project that needs done, think smart and think Kissel. Since 1974, Simonson has helped their clients stay on target to meet the goals and deadlines for their projects. From concept to completion, Simonson can design a plan and build a path for success. Let Simonson Construction turn that vision into a reality. Turn with the Kissel's Lawn Care post game show here inside of the truck stop where a stunning fourth quarter performance by second seeded Margareta advances them into the district championship as top seeded Crestview wraps up their season with 22 wins. I'm Brian Skronsky, Joe Baylog with me here on the call tonight. And boy, what a change of fortunes we saw in this contest where looked like Crestview was kind of on cruise control there midway through the fourth quarter. All of a sudden, Margareta got themselves back into the game. Big push and closed things out. Made some clutch free throws and some big plays. Yeah, I mean, you know, Crestview just just did not handle pressure late in the basketball game. Uh, you know, you see you see late in the game, a lot of times there's a lot of contact. You just got to be stronger. And, th and then I think maybe one of the big plays was uh, when Tyson Ringler uh, had, had a layup. I think Julian Washington blocked it. And then uh, they, uh, they got another rebound, and then they Tyson fouled. So instead of it, I think going maybe at that point it might have been like seven, maybe the, going to nine points, it was cut to five. So uh, Margareta took advantage of a lot of opportunities in the fourth quarter of getting to the free throw line, being able to cut into that lead, uh, especially early in the fourth quarter. You know, they didn't cut into it deep, but they were able to maintain enough that it was like at eight points by getting to the free throw line and the clock was not running. Right. Um, and so when you don't have that clock running, um, you know, that, that becomes a, a, a factor in the ball game. And, 
you know, they, they found enough time that they were able to make enough plays and win this basketball game. So great effort by the Polar Bears here to come back and win. We'll show you the story by the numbers with the final stats. A lot of point paints tonight for Margarita. We told you that's a place where they really excelled. Both teams combining for just five three-pointers in the game. Polar Bears doing a little bit better job on the glass. And then they pr protected the basketball in the fourth quarter. I think they only turned it over once. I mean, I think the, the, big, the big difference tonight you're going to look at uh, are the turnovers and the points off turnovers. And, and um, Margareta had to win that by, by a pretty significant margin tonight. Knocked down 18 free throws as well. The clutch three-point play at the end of the game by Gage Bodie obviously was huge to extend it to two possessions. And I, I've talked a lot of, throughout the year about uh, special situations, and sometimes people think that's just like last-second situations. But um, I learned uh, from a good friend of mine, Bob Von Kendall at Dover, that special situations are a lot of times out of bounds plays whether they're sideline or baseline and uh, Margareta had a huge success on a baseline out of bounds play that put the basketball game away. Just made a lot of big plays down the stretch to punch their ticket into the district championship game where they're going to face the winner of this second game that's going down right now. And I'm told that our MVP is on the way, so we're going to take a short commercial timeout. We'll be right back. You'll hear from Julian Washington. with our most valuable player presented by Arcelor Middle. I got the stud sophomore Julian Washington hanging out with me after a wild come from behind victory. So tell me about the scene in the locker room and just what it was like you and the boys and the team after making that big comeback. Oh, it was great. I mean, after um, Judah got clocked in the head, blood everywhere on the floor, I mean, coach just told us that we got to step it up. You know, he chewed a couple guys out and we came out, hit some big shots and we really just fought through. I mean, really, it was a great game down 11 in fourth quarter. You know, we just played hard. That was a crazy moment in the game, of course, with Judah, all the blood, and then Justice Thompson as well busted up his chin. Did that seem to galvanize the team, and did you guys fight on Judah's behalf after that in that fourth quarter? Do you yeah. think that was a big factor? Yeah, it definitely was a big factor. Um, you know, we just did it for him. I mean, obviously, we didn't think that he was going to um, come back into the game, but yeah. throw on a different jersey, got some stuff on his eye. I mean, really big for us. I think there was a really key moment in the game where Crestview still had the lead. They threw a baseball pass down here. You took your time defensively. You waited. You blocked the shot. And then you come down to the other end, and you ended up getting a bucket. It was kind of a four-point swing. Yep. Do you remember that? And how big did that feel? Yeah. Oh, it felt great. I thought that he was just going to go up, and I was probably going to get a foul. But I just made sure I stayed down and patiently waited for it. And it was just good. Good defense by us, and we converted off of it. 
So you and Judah, you're both sophomores, but you've kind of been leading the ship this year in terms yep. of the scoring offense. So to be that guy for this team, over 20 points a game, you put up 24 here tonight. What does that say about what you've been able to do as a player and then also winning the trust of your teammates? Um, I mean, we all trust each other. I mean, it's not just me and Judah. It's the whole team. I mean, we got guys that can go out and give you 12, 15 plus a night. So, I mean, we really just share the ball. We play hard in practice, and we just come out and get it done. But 26-9 in that fourth quarter, that was the spurt for you guys. In your personal opinion, what was the number one thing that allowed you to do that? Um, definitely our defense. I mean, we shut it down in the fourth quarter. We just tried to play our best defense. They were in the bonus, I think, so we just tried to play straight up, not foul too much, but it was definitely our defense was key. Well, I think it surprised a lot of folks that you went after the number one seed in the district semifinal, thinking that you liked the matchup. You're able to get by, moving on to the championship now. So yeah. big congratulations for that. Uh, the talk, the conversation within the locker room heading into the tournament, what were the expectations? What were some of the bars that you guys set for each other? Um, just go out and win, really. That's really it. That's it. Just go out and win, play hard, and have fun. Well, so far, so good. You're checking the boxes, man. So yep. congratulations, 24 points tonight, our Arsler Middle MVP. Go ahead, look in the camera, give as many shout-outs as you like. Um, i like to shout-out my dad. He's working in New Jersey. He wasn't here tonight, but I just want to say I love you, Dad, and um, hopefully you're watching tonight. I tried to put on a show for you down there in New Jersey, but um, thank you for my mom. I love my mom. I know she was out here. She was probably nervous. It was probably a nail-biter for her, but, um, yeah, i just like to shout-out God for – giving me all the gifts and talents that he's given me and um that's pretty much it three pretty good shout outs right there the parentals and always got to give the man upstairs some love yep. all right julian washington your mvp As we bring you back into the truck stop, going to put a bow on tonight's district semifinal contest between Crestview and Margareta as the Polar Bears make a big splash in the fourth quarter. They win it by six. We got our Hall of Famer back in it. And Joe, it's hard to take you anywhere. You seem to know half the people in the building always like anytime it's in a gym. Everybody's working on trying to get tickets for those games tomorrow night and see if, see if I have any connections. So. Tomorrow night's going to be a uh, lot yeah. of fun over at the Joe Arena. Yeah. Very much looking forward to going to your old stopping grounds and checking out some Division Two action. Um, but final thoughts on tonight's game here in Division well, Three. Well, first of all, congratulations to Margareta. you got you got to give them credit on the comeback. Uh, you know, any time from a coaching standpoint you get to this point and you've had a season like both these teams had, it, it's tough when one of those teams ha has to lose. And, uh, you know, right now Crestview's going to be looking back and picking this game apart and, and picking out several plays. Man, we could have we could have put this game away and they just they just didn't do it. Uh, but, you know, you got to give John Kurtz and, and the Cougars uh, and, and those the seniors that are leaving the program a lot of credit because – uh, they've, they've made uh, Crestview basketball not only pertinent in the Mansfield, North Central Ohio area, but that's kind of known in the state now with state rankings. So uh, they, they, they're building it, uh, but the, you know, the next step is always to try to get that district championship and just unfortunate for them that they weren't able to pull it off tonight. Yeah, still have not won a district title in the history of the program. Yeah. I don't think they've been there in about 65 years yeah. either, Joe. So yeah. this would have been a uh, monumental win and step for them. So we applaud the Cougars. It's been so much fun covering them all season long. But, hey, you know, it, only one team's going to win the whole thing at the end yep. of the journey, Joe. Yep. Yep. That's how it goes. I, I mean, the, the only the only year that that didn't happen was the COVID year. So, That's right. <laughs> so there were a lot of teams a lot of that, state champions. that they got to win their last game of the year. But uh, but that's what makes this this time of the year great also because there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of joy, but there's, there's also some sadness. But uh, the thing I think that, you know, uh, the Crestview kids can remember 
probably years after they get out is one they're going to have some really great memories of, of not just winning games, but the relationship they had with those kids, which is going to you know last for a lifetime. And then the other part of, of a lot of lessons that are going to be learned, uh, that they've already learned, that they really don't know they've learned yet. Uh, but but five, ten years down the road, you know they're going to have situations that happen in real life. And they're going to look back and go, hey, man, this is something I learned in basketball. Coach Kurtz, you know, taught me this lesson. So uh, that's what's special about being a high school basketball coach. Hall of Famer would know ball is life, Joe. Translates to so many different parts of everything. That is going to wrap up our coverage, though, here inside of the truck stop. A big shout out to all of you, the fans, watching here tonight live and free on our main YouTube as well as our Facebook page. And a thank you to Scout Construction, Kissel's Lawn Care, Simonson Construction, Home and Kitchen Supply, and Arcelor Middle coming together to be our sponsors here tonight. For my amazing crew, down on the sideline, Brandon Powell getting you all those tight shots. Jory Hollenbeck up top and Adam Thompson, our excellent producer director. I'm Brian Skronsky for Joe Baylog saying so long tonight from Norwalk. We'll see you tomorrow for those big games at Ontario, baby.